Hi, welcome uh, to Radio FM 88 Australia. This is Jeffrey Shaw speaking. I'm the one in the middle of the three uh, delightful um, boxes here. Obviously, I've got a lady behind me and one below me. So um, without further ado, it's um, 7 o'clock in Queensland. It's 8 o'clock in New South Wales and uh, Victoria. It's our friends across the New Zealand. It's 10 o'clock over there. And of course, our guest tonight, uh, today, is uh, from Germany, 10 o'clock in the morning there. And, um, and of course, Andrea. And my fellow co-hosts is nine o'clock in the morning in the UK. So um, without further ado, I'll pass you on to um, Andrea. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Sandra, for coming on the show. Um, I apologize in advance. I've got a husky voice. I've got come back with a little cough. So, um, yes. Um, so... I was sent one of your one a person shared one of your activations and I thought oh my god your voice was just amazing like it was just so powerful so I started following you and because I work pe with people's speaking voice great advocate today eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know it fascinates me how people found their voice what how it came about did you do training were you gifted was it from a family member and i know you do amazing um you know colors and sparkies and all of these sort of things i'm not very yeah thank you <laughs> would you like to um enlighten us um how it all started really oh i started a couple of years ago I started to sing, so um, I never had training, but I found that since I'm a child that I want to sing, yeah. So time after time, I practiced by my own, and after I had my own flat, so then I started to sing. When I turned in the middle of 20, so 25, 26, I started to sing. For real, yeah. And with light language, I started to sing in light language maybe for two years ago or one year ago. It, it came mm. intuitively up and I started to sing intuitively. Wow, amazing. You have to tell me about that one then. I don't know about that. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, because you're doing stuff, I think, nearly every day. You know, there, there's a different channeling or light language coming through. Yeah. Certainly you certainly yeah. got a lot of variety, so it must take up a lot of your time to do all these things. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens very spontaneously. So when the impulse is saying, "I want to sing, I want to talk," then I record it. So then I have my cell phone with me, and then I start to sing and start to talk. So yeah, many different species are coming through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I, I could hear like different, yeah, different energies if you like. Um, and I know you've got a huge following. Uh, with the work that you do and I, it's sort of growing and growing and growing so um so let's go back a little bit you you were born in Germany mm -hmm. and were you were your parents on this same sort of wavelength or into singing or anything like that or you, um, are you mm -hmm. odd one in the family <laughs> yeah one of my family members was a musician yeah so mm. it's it is from a family lineage yeah there were musicians yeah so and one of these members was musician. I, I think so. It, it comes from this lineage, yeah. Mm, mm, amazing. So what, um, if, you, if we track back again into your early days, because I know you've shared um, about what you used to see and sense. So would you like to share some of what you experienced in your younger days? When I was a child, uh, how mm. I... Oh, okay. Uh, I felt since I'm a child that... Um, my soul is not from here. So, but I never could explain it when I was a child, but only what I felt was a, a deep answer in my heart that I'm not from here. And nobody told me that, no family member or friends. I felt it in my heart very deeply. And I spent so much time in searching up from my home all the time. I looked up to the stars, then I searched up in books for my home, I studied astronomy books. <laughs> All the time I searched up for the stars because I wanted to figure out where my home is. All the time, yeah. And I went through the typical starseed loneliness as well. 
and I did so much. I studied so many books. I went to the psychologist. I read books about personality development because my my deep answer, yeah, I wanted to find out what's going on with me. And even the psychologist or books about personality development, they helped me up to a certain point. But these <laughs> books never explained my connection to ETs because I saw them also when I was a child. I saw the entities and yeah, it, it was, I have to say my childhood was very lonely. I felt very alone, yeah. Yeah, so what, so what um, other pathways came in to bring you into where you are now to yeah. really being fully present? Yeah, at the end, I'm very grateful for all the stages that I read so many books about psychology or about personality development because it, it helped me to understand the other stages, the other levels of consciousness, right? So body, mind and soul. So at the end, I'm very grateful even for this experiences, even when they were never able to explain my connections to ETs or why do I feel entities, why I feel not home here or that I had all the time visions of other planets. So, but it helped me. And when I turned into 24 or 25, maybe a good friend shared a video with me. It was a video about Syrian star seeds. Then I was guided for the first time to star seeds, <clears throat> but I had no idea what it is. So <laughs> even English was very complicated for me as well. <laughs> so has star seed Syrian? What what is that? But my friend told me I have to watch this video. This is all what he shared with me. Yeah, and these other Pleiadian and Octorian people <laughs> now. <laughs> And have you come across many people or many, many people that now know yeah. they're not from this, this planet, they're from yeah. other planets and we're all coming together on a soul tribe level to, you know, make the difference on the planet? Yeah, after I had my awakening, so then I was aware of all this connection. So then it explained my whole life. I cried during this video. It was a video about Syrian star seeds. And after I had my awakening, because it explained everything. So my whole life, my feelings, then I was guided intuitively to the people. Even in Germany, I met all the time star seeds and light workers. So intuitively, we were guided to each other. And that was very fascinating. Yeah, when the heart was being open, so then all this beautiful meetups happened and then I was guided to Marcel to my twin flame as well so because it, it was my awakening yeah so what age did you meet Miss Marcel when did he come into your life and how did you know he was your twin flame did you just you know come together and as one so to speak uh can you explain it again please all right <laughs> <laughs> How, when did you two come together? Ah, okay, um, for uh, five or four years ago now. So I can't count it because <laughs> since we are together, uh, we lose time and everything. So, <laughs> but I think so. We are together for four years now or five years. Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, did you have an instant connection when you came together? Did you know on every yeah. level of your being that it was your yeah. twin flame? Yeah, Marcel was not aware of, he got not a name for it, but when we saw each other, it was, we had the same feeling. We looked into each other's eyes and then we felt this deep connection. So, and then since these days, we feel this connection, so. <laughs> mm. So, um, with all the different work you do, for people that, because obviously, for what you do is a bit way out for some people to understand um, and, and get a grip of. Uh, I mean, we're totally with you on every level, so no problem here. But for those that are not um, quite understanding, and I know a lot of my friends, we often joke and say we've been dropped off on the wrong planet, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But we know we haven't, and we know we were here on a mission, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, what tips could you give um, anybody um, that are starting off or slowly awakening to 
what's going on in life and how it's affecting them and what changes they can make. Mm -hmm. I think the global process now is that we train our heart center. So when we try to get it here with our mind, so then it makes no sense, even not light language. Because I receive also comments, oh, um, can you translate this language? What does it mean? So, but actually we can't translate it because it's the, it's the language of the soul. And I use light language to translate the frequency of these beings because they are connected telepathically to each other. So many of them, they have no language like us, but for me, it's a tool to transmute their frequency. Yeah, and when we try to get all the subjects with our mind, so then we will not get it. Or maybe we will say, come on, this is not true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's more important to open your heart and that we see a little bit through the eyes of a child again that we are more curious. So hmm, that sounds interesting. Yeah, so I will study the subject a little bit more. So and I think that's very important when people are new on the subject that they um, are open minded for the new subjects. Yeah, that we are tuned into it and that we open our hearts and that we feel what's going on. Yeah, because when we are too much conditioned by the 3D matrix, so then you will say, mm -mm, this is not true. That's a lie, they are only crazy, right? So, but when you go back into your heart, I think that's the most important tool. Yeah, totally, totally. And and it is, it's like learning to breathe again and put your hand on your heart and, and it's like coming back to base, isn't it really? Yeah. Um, you know, with all different, and I know I did listen a little bit last night to your um, heart one and I thought I need to listen, because that was quite long, compared to your other ones. So I thought I need to listen to that maybe later today and um, tune in with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and what, so um, can you share more about the ETs? Oh Next. yeah. That would it be does, lovely. Yeah. It does exist many different species, so many different species and at the end. So even when we don't see it on the media, <laughs> They are talking a little bit about it, right? So that they are in contact with ETs, even the government and so on, a little bit. But actually, that's the, the root. Yeah, it's the, it's the story of the galactic species that they are observing us or even dark species, right? That they controlled Earth as well. So actually, it's, it's galactic. And that's, for me, the deep answer behind all this what's happening now. It's a galactic spiritual war at the moment. So, and all what you can see on the media is lockdown, right? Bim, bim, peaks, peaks, and so on. But this is this is not the deep answer. The deep root is the galactic war. <laughs> so, um, and it does exist very lovely ones. They are supporting us. They are here for us. But it does exist also races. They mean it not so good with us, right? So and this is what you can see, and even high sensitive people, they, they feel it, that something is, is strange energetically. We, we can't see it with our physical eyes, but many people feel it. So what's going on in the back, right? So, and this is what I can share with you. And it does exist so many different species and they have so many different intentions. And for us humans, sometimes it's complicated to get their intentions as well, yeah? <laughs> <clears throat> but it does exist also species they are very similar to us to us humans yeah. and they want to support us or they were there before on earth or they created atlantis or lemuria these were the founders of this high um ancient civilizations they were very involved so in these beings they know earth very well and they know humans very well so and they are helping and supporting us yeah mm. yeah they are very cool so i was guided to this being so <laughs> it looks very cool yeah and it does exist so many different species so i guess almost nobody knows everyone so <laughs> because yeah. the galaxy is so big and we don't know how big the universe is or maybe we have more universes so Mm. And they are very uh, advanced in technology, so. Yeah. 
anything you want to ask Jeff any you'd like to um yeah um just, you're really getting down there on the flick hey um what I saw before was um how is it where are we Let's go there was um I just want to bring that up this one here this is um this is recent isn't it yeah, yeah. that's a newer one yeah um i was going to suggest that we might just give this about three four minutes of airtime um just to give people a taste of what they could expect because um you really put this up on your youtube channel isn't it so um mm -hmm. this i mean people can write that thing down or they can come back and watch the uh, replay and just make a note of it but i'm quite sure if they go onto youtube and just do a cura a-k-u-r-a they'd be able to come on it but um Let's give this about, say, three, four, five minutes, and then um, just give people an idea um, with your channeling. Because that's, um, I actually, when I heard it, I thought, oh, that sounds a bit like James Hertek when he was in the um, the, the great uh, pyramids in Giza in the, the chambers there. So it's, it's quite surreal, isn't it? So let's have a look. Let's have a go and um, see what it's got to say. I can't hear anything. No sound. No. Is there. All right. It's okay. It's working also when there's no sound there. <laughs> the effects mm. are working. <laughs> That's very interesting, eh? <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is that you're not getting any audio. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a very, it, it was very, uh, I heard something, a noise, but it was very quiet. Oh, it's got on full, got on full there. Um, let's just uh, carry on there, girls. Um, share the screen. I mean, would oh, you be able to do a live, spontaneous little... Um... Oh, hang on, see, here we go. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's take that back. Oh, share it. Sorry, I'm going to do <coughs> coming up. Sorry, girls. Oh, there you go. Sorry, let's try it again. Be the eye of the storm. Can you hear it? A massive breakdown is happening. God ut ut uma. Ak ak derik ik the masses ut uma. Trust your intuition. Delat eniketa stada. Your intuition will guide you. That amak ut 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 esi. Ak ihik amak ut 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 emesi ik ik at. Ak uho baba eriki. Take your power back. But it it is ut ut uma akshe. Feel the energy. Mit esit it at at ut dosi. Hear your roots. So balancing the divine feminine and masculine that elected up this is the fifth D dimension. Honest with your feelings. Met it at at tut 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 tut. Share your authenticity with the world. Amat ik ik arik tut amase. Your heart is the gateway to the fifth dimension. Met ik it isodo. Ak ik ik tama. See lights and shadows. Met it it tut tut tut. Met ik it asin tut tut ko ahama. Bed erik ak tut tut tut. Rik it isasasa. Activate your roots. Met ese. Um. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
God's mercy. You are divine, met act it a. We are humans like you, met et esse. Ukt ot ot aha ak a reshekt met et esse. Ukt ot ot ho aheha. Bet et e onu urik ik is aktis. Mot ot 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 aktisita. We love you infinitely, bet esse. Now it's your turn, bet et e. You deserve it, mat ik ut o hok asse. To me a ha. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I think it's uh, important to uh, bring out passion, and, and uh, you certainly got the passion there, and certainly there's a, a resonance in your voice that um, mm -hmm. you can feel it. Um, I mean, with the headphones, it's just um, a surreal sound. You know? well, thank you for um, publishing it and putting it out there into the, the global community. Yeah. Thank you very much. It is much fun to sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all. Um, we're all singers in our own way, so uh, certainly like to use our voice in certain ways. But that's, um, as I said, it sounded like um, I was listening to James Hurtag inside the pyramid. Yeah, really. It was, it really <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Andrew just said, "Have you got any questions?" So, okay, let's just start on the um, when you get into a well, sort of a Zen place, is it? So you, you find your own little sanctuary at home, and then sort of just slowly but surely you just get yourself into alignment you just bring yourself you, are you using principles like qigong or you're using tai chi or you're just a little breathing exercises or uh, what, what's your first steps to sort of get to that sort of space there where you've got no no space whatsoever is that the right word to say you're just in the empty space and then boom yeah it. yeah it, it it comes up so so and i do it very intuitively so that I take a deep breath. So I'm a very intuitive person. <laughs> and when my heart is telling me I want to play video games, so then I do not wait <laughs> that I play video games. <laughs> yeah. So it's very hard to explain it. I trust only my impulses. So when my impulse is saying I want to go out, then I do it. Because I think our heart, our soul is guiding us. So even when many choices make no sense at the beginning, so at the end, everything made sense. So, sure. so you got that monkey mind. It's really interesting because I suppose a lot of people are actually thinking, "Well, I like to do that," or I really can't get into that Zen place, you know. And a lot of a lot of ladies will talk to their husbands and say, well, "What are you doing? Nothing, nothing. What's nothing? Well, nothing." So <laughs> you just got to find that nothing space. So. Um, it's nice to hear you say that you want to do video games. So it's like the monkey mind sort of coming in there. Yes, so. it's everything. Yeah, yeah. So when I tune into it, then I observe my thoughts as best I can. So that I figure out why do I receive these thoughts. And the most of the thoughts or when I feel distractive emotions, the most of that is not me. So then I feel the neighbor's stress or the collective that they are stressed or that do something in the government because we impacts or star seeds, we feel that so close and so strong in our energy body or when something is happening. Yeah. So, or that I receive visions. That's a needs training to figure out. Is it my emotion? Is it my thought? Or is it the thought of my neighbor or of the collective or, or what is the government doing? And then sometimes I'm guided to the information and then I see the metaphor or the similarity. Oh, see, they made very strange decisions in the government and I can see the similarity. Oh, that's what I felt today. It, it was them. Yeah, I felt their plans or their energy. And it's very typical for impacts or star seeds that we feel the energy so strong in our body. And this needs training to figure that out. That's more our process and problem <laughs> that we and feel so much. Feel you. So, um, did you say you get the visions as well? So do you just allow the, the vision to sort of flow through you or do you actually stop um, and just get a piece of paper and write or do you just go and get a little recorder and just record uh, what it is you've seen and as you, as you either write it or as you see it, are you unlocking your vision? Is, is, is that the technique that you're using or...? They come through me, these visions, on many different levels. So through dreams or I have very strong 
very colorful dreams, lucid dreams. Then I receive visions on this level. Sometimes, boom, it plops up. And then I got the impulse, yeah, now I channel or I record a video. It's the same with YouTube. Then I feel that, okay, now I received a message. I have to create a new YouTube video, for example. And this is, it's hard for me to explain it because it's like, boom, it, it plops up. Sometimes I figure out, oh, my galactic family told me, right? They gave me this advice. So it's, it's happening on many different levels and it comes to me because I try my best to open my heart. And when my heart is open, so then I allow that the information is coming to me on many different levels. So, um, so let's come back to all these different um, galactic beings and from different star systems and so forth. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, um, on the phone there, you've got an area code for your local um, German district or if you want to make a ST, well, an ISD call to England plus 44. So do you have some sort of system in your whole personality that tells you, okay, I've got a phone call coming in from Andromeda or I've got a phone call coming from uh, Pegasus or I've got some coming from Arcturus. Have you got sort of some sort of little switch that tells you where that um, call is coming from? Yeah. Yeah. I sense that very clear, yeah. If these are the Octarian people, the Syrian people, Pleiadian people, Andromedan people, these are very well-known species who are supporting Earth very much, the Larian people as well. So these are the most common beings, I think so. And the most of the stars, it's have connections to them, or these are Syrian or Pleiadian people. The most of the stars, it's are from the Pleiades or Sirius, the most of them. So, and I can figure that very clear out and even the dark ones as well when they try to attack because their energy feels totally different <laughs> it's totally. totally different yeah yeah then i feel that also their energy when they try to interrupt or attack us so um people will often talk about having a gatekeeper or a doorkeeper um in your case you obviously in the old days of uh, of businesses when telephones were just coming on not like today it was you know, the way we got mobile phones, but um, the phones would come in and you have a switchboard there and you ring the central switchboard and then they'll put you through the extension. So um, have you got someone who's acting as your um, switchboard um, for taking these phone calls? So you, you've got a, your guardian angel, whatever you want to call it, comes in and says, okay, I'm going to get this phone call coming in. Like to us, or you just that person that is acting on your behalf who's looking after your interests um, has given you those sort of little keys there that tells you okay we're going to sit down to the we got, right this very minute we've got someone coming through and they're coming in from Arcturus and um you get a little tap on the left shoulder to let you know that that's where they're coming from and if you get a tap on the right shoulder you've got Pleiadians if you get a tap on the head you got Sirius it's just your switchboard operators putting through the phone call is it generally one way of interpreting what's going on with you uh can you explain it again please I'm very sorry <laughs> um Okay, so in the old days of telecommunication and businesses, a phone call would come in and you, unless you, you didn't know the extension, you'd come straight to a big switchboard and there'd be an operator on it. And they would, you'd say, could I speak to Akura, please? And then they'll just get the phone, go plug it in here, and then they'd ring you and then say, you've got a phone call. Um, can you, can you, remember, oh, I don't know, you're 33, aren't you? Probably not aware of that type of system of communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably the people who are watching the show probably have an understanding of what I'm explaining there to sort of give a, I'm just trying to get an understanding that your, say, guardian angel, your doorkeeper is acting as a protection there, and but they're also giving you insights to say, excuse me, we've got a phone call coming in from Sirius, and they give you a little tap, like, okay, we've got an extension cord coming in here to plug in to say, listen, here, we've got a phone call coming in from Arcturus. I'm just trying to see if your body is, is a representation of your an angel who's acting as a switchboard operator um, to give you some sort of clue that you got a phone call coming in from Sirius or Arcturus. So. No, I figured it out very, very clear and easily. So and I can tune into it also. So then I can call the Syrian people or the Arcturian people and then I feel it here, my crown chakra, and then I'm connected to them. Yeah, or I hear their voice sometimes as well. It's happening on many different levels. Yeah, I hear them, sometimes I see them, I feel them. 
or then I see them in front of my third eye with my third eye or I see them energetically in front of me on many different levels. So it's it's happening because it's happening, right? So, so or sometimes I have dreams of them as well or I see myself as a galactic being in lucid dreams or in astral travel. So it's happening on many different levels. That's good. Now, anybody who's watching the show and watching the replay then gets a grasp of where you're coming from because somewhere along the line they're getting a similar way of doing it but they feel like they're alone and they're not too sure what it is you know they're on the right path or they're right they're getting the right source so uh, that's one of the reasons that Andrea has brought you on the show today was to um, awaken other people and you're just showing off your path that may enlighten other people who might be working alone as well or might be with a small group somewhere on the planet and um, you just trigger them to understand there's many ways of getting that communication. I really appreciate that uh, insight that you've just given. Yeah? yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. When it's helping people, I'm super happy and grateful. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, do you actually get to the point where um, they actually manifest um, physically or is it just in the vision, peripheral vision or have you actually had any physical manifestations? Is with, uh, I receive visions, but when I was a child or a teenager, a young adult, time after time, I saw ships on the sky. So especially since this galactic war, <laughs> I see all the time ships on the sky. So it has started last year. So we had a galactic war over Earth in April 2020. It has started and many good friends saw this war on the sky and so many star seeds or other people saw this war. Yeah, it was like Star Wars. So um, my feeling told me not to leave the house, but I felt it. These explosions, boom, I were so excited. I was not able to go to bed because I was so excited and I got the advice that I have to be awake. So um, yeah, that is what I can share with you. When I talk about physical manifestation <laughs> that I saw, especially since last year, ships on the sky. That was crazy because a few days later, after this galactic war, I went for a walk every night because I was curious, because my friends told me, oh, did you saw this on the sky? It was so crazy. Star Wars is real. Oh, my gosh. Then I was curious, and then I went out for a walk, and really almost every night I saw very high technical ships on the sky or they look like they were transparent non-physical and that was so amazing to observe that show on the sky so when i talk about physical manifestation then i can talk about ships <laughs> okay right yeah mm -hmm. fair play yeah. so um, so of all the different um, galactic species i mean do many of them actually um, come forward to say that they are members of any Particular galactic council. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah, yeah. They uh, when I saw this on the sky, it, it for me it was like they were happy. So for for example, I started to sing a light language in the middle of the night. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I guess it was the Syrian Syrian light language, and I made oh, this yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I had the impulse boom yeah because I, I received this pull in my heart. It's, it's very strong. And then I got the information. I have to watch out. I have to look up to the sky. And then after I started to sing in Latin language, a non-physical object appeared. And it looked like it was magenta, magenta and, and, and um, rose pastel a little bit. And it looked like a ghost. And it moved like, like that. So it was like they were happy. So because they, they celebrated us in the ascension, because they got it in higher dimensions, yeah, to protect us. And I observed this show all the time. And then I started to sing a light language and then boom, I got the impulse to look up and then <laughs> this object appeared. So that was very magical. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So um, with your um, newfound... Um gifts coming forth i mean you probably had those gifts and you just just had to come to that point and trigger in your life where bomber came in um i take it then are you running um workshops or classes and because of the uh the so-called 
issues we got at the moment. Are you doing that on a, a Zoom or any of those other um, online? No, uh, maybe, maybe in future. I was thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Now at the moment I'm offering readings, starseed readings or past life readings. Do you? Yeah, okay. this is what I'm offering. Yeah, to help other starseeds to remember. So this is my main mission here to remember starseeds, who they are. Okay, right, like you're triggering them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good, Andrea. Yeah, I was going to say I saw on one of your links that you're offering a discount to people for just the month. Of yeah, December. yeah, the Christmas season. Yeah, that's my gift for. All the subscribers so yeah they can use this code yeah um yeah because i think was it 20 percent you were offering off of you know all the different things that you do mm -hmm. so. yeah i shared it on facebook this code and i think also on youtube because uh, there's the community group you yeah. can uh, send posts there also yeah i shared it also there mm -hmm. so you will mm -hmm. find the code there yeah yeah so just if any of the viewers are interested and would like to know more, then they can um, find you on your YouTube and on the link below. So yeah, that, and it's it's like often I walk out, not so much night now, but um, I often look up to the skies looking for to see because we know they're around, and I know those there are those that can see them with their physical eye, and some that you know like you get the visions, and mm -hmm. so I know, I know there are many. Because they are saying that we have won the, the spiritual war. We're on that um, mm -hmm. balance of ch massive changes about to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially balancing lights and shadows again. We had too much darkness here on Earth and even in higher dimensions. It was too dark almost everywhere. So and they only want to bring back balance again, even to Earth. So and yeah. this is where, where people feel this. <sighs> between light, shadows, this, this this war, because we want to find balance and peace again. Yeah, and it's a, a galactic war in the back. So, and I figured out that they are attacking, especially light workers and starseed right now in the back energetically to stop them or to lower their frequency. So and they're using that technology. So that's, yeah, they yeah. are masters in twisting teachings and attacking people and to figure out your weak points. So. What we can learn by the dark ones is that they never give up. Yeah. This is they never give up, and we can do the same. That we continue, that we go forward, and that we share our light with humanity all the time. So, and this is what I uh, observe by many light workers and starseeds that they got attacked mostly right now by them in the back. So it almost nobody sees is what we do all the time, yeah, because it's energetically, yeah. Mm. Interesting, eh? Uh, I know, like, I when I lived in Glastonbury, the lady I lived with who was very psychic, and she used to every time people would come, she always say, "This is Andrina from Andromeda." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but then I know we've come from many planets. We haven't only come, yeah, from, like, series and you know, all yeah. the different, we've cut. We've done many lifetimes in many places, haven't we? Yeah, the most of us have more than one connection. So even when yeah. I create readings, the most of us have more than one connection. So, mm. yeah, but you will feel the basic line. So when you know your origin, it's like you know your childhood. So when we explain it in this language, it's like, so then you know your childhood. So, and the childhood is very um, affecting us even when we are adults. So we still remember our home and where we grew up and how we grew up. So that is for me when you figure out your origin. Mm, Almost the same energy dynamic, yeah. Mm, mm. Mm, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to talk about. <laughs> I know it's, uh, you know, you can go off on this tangent and that tangent, but um, yeah, I, ju I just love your voice activations. I love light language. You know, the first time I heard it, and um, I was with I was uh, in Australia, and I was with a group of about twenty five people, and the lady came round and she did a light language activation to each person. Oh, cool! Uh, 
And when she, and you could tell the languages were completely different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, Italian, French, Spanish, you, you could just hear the difference. And when she came to me, it was the dolphins and she had them squeaking and doing all sorts of things. So it's like really magical. And I thought, wow, she, I don't think she knew that I had such a strong connection with whales and dolphins, but when they come through like that, it was um, pretty spectacular for me anyway. Oh, wow, that sounds interesting. Yeah, mm. because we, we see the frequency and the energies. So when you are psychic, you can feel the entities and the energies by the person. So And then you do it intuitively. So even when you don't know it, when you're not aware of that information, but we feel it, yeah? Because mm. it's in our blueprint, it's the DNA. Mm. Yeah, and you can translate the blueprint in the DNA. Uh, I've tried to talk dolphin language, but I sound more like a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes anyway um what was the other thing i was going to say um some hang on, i'll come back to that. um doing a reading the star seed reading um how does that how do you talk us through that how do you start with that proceeding and what do you do um how i did it do you know what to know oh, no, no, the process on. Now someone comes in to you and asks for a star seed re- star star seed star reading. seed reading, yeah. <laughs> Just take us through those steps and what you do then when you have got someone coming through. Now obviously, mm-hmm. not if we watch, we got people all around the world watching. So obviously they'll be coming through on either Facebook Messenger or they'll be coming through on YouTube or they might be coming on Signal or uh, Telegram or any other of these new platforms. Um, well, let's start with those platforms. What platforms do you actually use to do your readings when you've got people um, uh-huh. in Germany? Yeah, I record it here on my computer and I send this files through WeTransfer. I use this platform. At the moment, I'm recording MP3 files for the clients. Yeah, and I have a website. <laughs> okay, so I'll put that website up now. So you just send through an audio file or you just do the video file when you send it to them? Uh, can you translate it again, please? I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. When you do the recording for them, do you do it as an audio file, an MP3, or are you doing it's it a, as a, audio, a video audio. MP4? Yeah, MP3, it's an audio file. So you're doing an audio. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you do it through, what did you say? We, we, we transfer. transfer.com. Yeah, that's yeah, a platform gotcha. you can upload yep. fast there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so someone comes in knocks on your door sits down what's a how do you start your proceedings how do you do the reading then how does it all come about mm, they sent me a current photo and then i tune into the energy so when i take a look into the eyes or i scan the aura the frequency it's helping me to connect with the higher self when i see a picture or when i see the eyes of the clients and then it starts intuitively i start to talk what i see when um, a person booked a starseed origin reading, then I'm staying focused on the galactic um, past lives or the purpose or the origins. And then I start to talk and I describe what I see in this person. <laughs> okay, so um, when you're looking into the eyes, I notice it's like always called the windows of yeah. the soul there. So you're really yeah. getting into it. Hey, um, do you actually because i mean you speak german um and you're doing english really well as well and you're doing the light languages so you, you work in any other um human languages i mean you're very close to other countries there like you're polish or you're dealing with um Swiss no, no. um the people booking sessions all over the world when i started with youtube the most of the people were germans because i offered german content and I have to thank a very good soul sister because she pushed me that I have to offer English content and actually I can't speak English. <laughs> and I started with English content for, I don't know, for a couple of years ago, three or two years ago, I started to offer English content. So before I never spoke English again. So she said, my higher self told me, and your galactic family is saying you have to offer English content. And she was an amazing soul sister from the USA. And she was guided to me because that's very funny because she speaks German a little bit. And yeah, she understands German, but she speaks English as well. 
And then she said, come on, record the English reading for me. And I told her, I can't. How should I do that? I can't speak English. And she said, it's okay. You can speak German as well. I will understand you. And through her, yeah, I'm so grateful for her. She pushed me to offer English services, <laughs> English yeah. content on YouTube. <laughs> well, I'm glad she did. But yeah. I, remember, I remember saying to you a little while ago, um, you kept apologizing for your journey. Yeah, I apologize uh, all the time for my English. Yeah. And, I, and I said, you need to stop because most of us can't even talk good English. So, <laughs> you know, you're doing two languages. So, well, not most of us, speaking for myself. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. so um, now you're doing fantastic. You know, keep, keep shining and keep sharing. I just um, really enjoy your channelings in the light languages. So... And I know when we Jeff played the heart activation, the first, because I think it's about 44 minutes long, I could feel the energy and I could feel it in my heart. I could feel this emotion straight mm -hmm. away within four minutes. I, and I could really feel it. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm so grateful that you invited me to this show because I can all the time practice my English skills. That's very cool. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so we're based in Germany. Are you based in? I mean, can you go walking around the lakes or uh, woods, or you're in the metropolitan city? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit complicated because at the moment the situation is very chaotic here in Germany, um, and at the moment we're staying in a village, so it's better for us. Yeah, but when we would go into a city, hmm. We feel that so strong in our body. My twin flame Marcel as well. It's like what I told you before. We feel it's so intense what, what's going on in the people and how they feel right now. So and when they feel scared or angry, so we, we feel their emotions so strong. So I think it's better at the moment that we are in a village <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, well you can actually get out and about and you can hear the birds and you got the other wildlife around you and it, it's that the sounds of nature that really provide that mental um uh, stimulus in it yeah yeah we are very close to nature right now and um i like germany because of the nature because uh germany has a very strong energy actually the nature is vibrating very strong here or when you go down to south bavaria or down to austria switzerland right the mountains so it's a very strong energy there. It's it's oh, grounding a lot. Yeah. Huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Mm. So, but it's problem. more it's more the the government and more the uh, yeah just the the political situation that's more stressful at the moment. Yeah. Mm. So and it's what I'm getting by many people that they are stressed and scared. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you just got to rise above it, don't you? So that's when you meet like-minded people and um, sharing your experiences, isn't it? Yes, of course. So and there's, there's a huge network of star seeds, light workers. Yeah. You know, people want, you know, when I've read some of your comments, like, you know, there's hundreds sometimes um, of people sharing what they felt or, you know, thanking you for what you do um, mm. because you are just helping so so many and i know there's a few comments popping up um thanking you for what you do because you know you've come in so young to be of service to the planet and um and humanity and you know and i know i've listened to some of your stories on youtube so i know it hasn't been easy for you so um yeah you're doing wonderful work so keep shining keep, thank you, know, you. Yeah. We continue, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. don't stop. <laughs> now I bet do you get do you get interruptions in dream state when you're sleeping. Do they mm -hmm. sort of say wake up? <laughs> you know, I've got yeah. this message. Yeah, yeah, time after time. So even mm -hmm. the dark ones, they want to interrupt. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for example, I guess it was a Monday. Yeah, very strange things happened in the government because we have a new president, for example. And then I receive these messages during the dreams. Then I have very crazy dreams. So and then I wake up oh, all the time and then oh, I fell into sleep and then, and then I wake up again. So and that's this, yeah. Then I receive all the information in the back here. Yeah? So I don't know exactly what I do all the time, 
but I receive all the time uh, messages and information what's going on in the back or sometimes I uh, this happened for two weeks ago circa um, that I saw all the time visions of the USA for example what's happening there so then I have lucid dreams of them or about the government in the USA so and it, this is coming to me mostly during the night so mm. yeah and time after time they try to interrupt the dark ones yeah so what can we do as a collective light being star seeds whatever do now to help through this big shift this what's going on yeah what that we are yeah unite like? this is very important i think so that we are connected that we try to have meetups or I think even uh, Facebook or Telegram, WhatsApp, I think so there are many Stasi groups that we are connected, that we are supporting each other, yeah. that we talk about our feelings and emotions because so many Stasis, they feel this loneliness. So um, that they got the feeling they can't talk about their feelings, about their visions because almost nobody got them, right? So, and they feel alone. And I think for us, it's very important that we are helping each other that we express ourselves now because more and more people are waking up now and they yeah. are guided to us intuitively because they feel there must be more, there is more. And then they start to search up for the subjects on YouTube. And this is very fascinating to observe that progress that these people become more and more famous yeah, that more people are searching up for the subjects. And this is what I get all the time, that we step up, that we share our visions with humanity, and that we are supporting each other as best we can. And mm -hmm. when possible, then that we meet each other physical as well. Yeah, that we have real meetups. I think so is also important. Yeah. I know, um, I don't know about anywhere else, but I know in the UK on a Sunday, there's groups everywhere that meet up in the park, stand in the park. Yeah. And ah, cool. Excuse me. While she's doing that, um, we do have them here in Australia. Um, there's a group that just meets down the road here, 10 o'clock in the morning to 11, but most of them um, have been there till 1 o'clock. And um, there's a cafe next door to the park. So um, a lot of us actually have gone off to the with a cafe afterwards for um a lunch so it's actually building community in it so um and it's quite surreal because i went to a, a meeting last night with 650 people turned up and mm. uh it only took five days to put that together and they had the most eloquent um speakers there on a range of subjects they're all given 10 minutes and they're very uh straightforward shot from the hip spoken the australian vernacular um which means um those people are talking bullshit. So I mean, that's just Australian way of speaking. So you knew that they were coming from a heart space by saying, "No, nah, this is bullshit." Um, and everybody walked out realizing that they weren't alone. It was a very powerful um, evening, and, mm -hmm. and that's been happening right around. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, Marcel and me, we started to visit raw vegan events <laughs> or vegan events, yeah, because there are also very alternative people there. Right. So and many of them indicating were star seeds, but they were not awakened yet. Because many star seeds are guided to alternative subjects or they go to psytrance festivals, for example, because it's more out of the box. Yeah, many star seeds, even when they are not awakened yet, they are all the time guided to alternative groups or communities because they want to figure out what's going on with them. Yeah, this is the, the, the deep search up in your heart. So, and I met so many star seeds, even when they were not awakened on vegan festivals, vegan events, or side trans festivals, because they, they are guided intuitively um, mm -hmm. to each other. And then you have the connection even when they're not awakened yet. So, and we met very cool people even on the raw vegan events or potlucks. We call it potlucks here. So everyone is creating a dish, yeah, and then we are eating. <laughs> yep. And this booming here in Germany, the vegan community, yeah. The spiritual community is not so much, not so many people talking about spirituality or, or about star seeds, but the vegan community is booming here in Germany, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So um, going back to the stand in the park, I know 
friends in Bristol and surrounding, they've all met up. And then like Jeff, they've all gone out together for a coffee afterwards and they're building up networks and, you know, it's sort of rippling out and it's growing, you know, links are going here, there and everywhere. It's, it's just like the undercover movement. But um, right, it's, it's grassroots, isn't it? I mean, uh, yeah. I went to a, an event there where pretty close to 50,000 people turned up. And um, I mean, I wasn't there at Woodstock, but I uh, would say it was a bit like Woodstock in the terms of love, you know, you could feel the love from grandma and granddad and they got the kids in the stroller and, um, and you got all age groups participating and it was really a place of um, really warmth and love. It was back to the days when uh, we worked six days and then, um, or even on the sixth day was, you knocked off at midday, but Sundays was a day when you got with the families and cousins and um, relations and you went to the, you know, the beach or you went to the woods you know, for a picnic. And um, that's the, that's the atmosphere and the energy that was there on that particular day. It was, it was an awesome experience, you know, contrary to what, um, other uh, broadcasters would would have you believe, you know. Mm. Next question, yeah. Andrew. Yeah, um, <laughs> of course. Like everybody's on a different journey, and even though we can't understand some of their journeys, and you think really, and then they can't even understand where we're at, and they think, oh, you know, where's she at, or, you know, it, it's. All you can do is follow your heart and be true to yourself. And, you know, like I shared a post about honoring your soul and you might, with what's going on, you must feel something in your soul that there are some things that aren't right. And, um, and it is literally following your heart and sitting with yourself and, and um, just allowing, you know, whatever's going on radiating out from within. Yes, of course. We have to be the change we, we mm. want to see in the world. We have to start with the new world. So, and I think it starts from within that we shift our consciousness level. So many people are talking about ascension or 5D, but I think it starts from within at first that we shift our consciousness level up to 5D because when our perspective is changing, or we have other state of consciousness so then we are creating a new world together because we are treating each other differently we see each other from another perspective and i think the first step is that the shift starts from within that we are the change mm. and i often feel you know when people get really angry about what's going on and and they're really reacting i always think you need to look what why it's triggering you what do you need to heal within um so that once you heal within and you we're all coming from the same heart space we can make massive changes along the way yeah and the, and this is what this show is about dreaming the new dream is is who anybody that's making a difference in any way be it on the earth in the planet with food to do with animals is it's all about you know what they've got to offer what they want to share with the world so and, and i've been blessed to have um some really interesting speakers sharing their story and what they do you know yeah. it gives, it's like a box of chocolates you know it's some you think oh i don't, don't think i'll bother with that but oh i like that one and and i know i've gone through some of the back recordings and i've been listening to them and i just think wow there's just so much going on out there that people are sharing it's just lovely of course especially when people are happy so i enjoy this so much when i see happy people mm -hmm. so even when i would do it but when they are happy and they express their unique soul so this makes me so happy so everyone is becoming individual again so and this is my big wish for humanity that the people start to remember who they are and that every one of us is so unique to be like a child a little bit again, right? That we yeah. express yeah. our soul without these limitations here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so have you met many other beings that are on the same web wavelength as you, so to speak, doing light language and ETs and all that? Have you met many other beings along your, you know, you've connected with like your mm -hmm. planet soul tribe, if you like? yeah at the moment more online that i know many other yeah light code people 
<laughs> yeah, the transmitting light codes, we are planning projects together. That's very cool. And I know a few people, they are here located in Germany or in Austria, a few people. But here in, in Germany and in the center of Europe, it's not very well known. Almost nobody is doing that or is talking about it. It's totally unknown here. Yeah, right. but the most of the people online right now. So and they are doing very a very great job and it's so fascinating everyone is speaking a little bit different and, and has a other light language so and the energy is coming through and that's so fascinating so even when a person is channeling arcturians as well so the light language and the frequency sounds a little bit different again so and this is very fascinating mm. to see how colorful we are so yeah of course and light language is very cool because it's helping me and I think so other people that they go back into their heart because mm. this is 5D. Our heart is 5D. So and actually light language or light codes are vibrating so much faster because you receive more information during a shorter time as we speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and it's happening all faster. That's cool because you open your heart and you only feel the energy, not more. Mm. Yeah, and light language is very fast, isn't it? Um, yes. I know there's another guy in Australia, he does it. And when I first heard him, he, it was so fast. I thought, you couldn't even try and do a little <laughs> bit of what he did. It was just like, oh, my God. It was just amazing. So, um, yeah, no, I just uh, enjoy it all. So um, Yeah, um, and there are so cool people on TikTok as well. So TikTok is booming, really. There are so many yeah. cool people and they're speaking that language or they dance that's very cool i can't do it but i enjoy that when people are dancing <laughs> and they're transmuting codes with their hands that's very very cool so tiktok is booming yeah there are so many people and they speak that language that's very cool i got to admit i'm not the greatest of being online and <laughs> technology i really uh, I deal with it as best I can, but all these different platforms and messages, it's just like, just far too much for me. But then I'm the older brigade, so. Yeah, yeah. younger people are mostly there, yeah. They're yeah. on TikTok, yeah. You have to talk to a Kura there and just ask to speak German, mate. She can do English, just like that. There's <laughs> a challenge for you. Mm. Hey? Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, Akura was slash Sandra there. Um, with your singing and that, um, we, you know, oh, hang on, I'll rephrase that. Remember um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind and then the craft came down and then we started playing all these different notes as you would see in a song sheet. Um, and so they were giving them the, the so-called alphabet in order to communicate with them. So in your understanding with the light language, have you come to a, a realization within your own persona that when the words are coming through, you know now the actual alphabet, the, the actual syntax of the language? Have, have you sort of now starting to realize that you now learn English and you know how to put words together to create a sentence? Have you come to an understanding now that when someone comes through with, from Syrian, you know their syntax or their, you know, their language, you can actually now um, write it down and, and basically write a script on that particular language and then um, pass that on. And so Marcel, for example, you can just read that and see the interpretation. Is, is, are you currently doing that? Um, I, I don't get it for 100%. Do you, do you mean that I can translate the language or? Yeah, like I, in the movie itself, have you ever seen the movie, Close Encounters of the Third Con? No, no, uh-uh. I don't know. Oh, this sorry, okay. <laughs> so I'm too young. Oh, stuff on YouTube, mate. I'm quite sure of it. Somewhere. <laughs> Netflix or something, I'm quite sure it must be out there. Um, okay, in that particular, um, what's the name? You made that Steve, uh, what's the name? Um, he actually did a representation where they used color codes and using the music song sheet, you know, where you, you've got um, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and you've got the minors and all that stuff and the majors. So 
they were just doing the color codes and they were all of a sudden they left handed it over to the computer system and the computer was in just taking it all on and then they realized they had the language of, mm. of, the, of the visitors from over from outer space so they hadn't mm. had it understanding of language now and the language was also sound and color mm -hmm. i just if you hadn't seen the movie i apologize i thought you might have but, no. <laughs> but it sounds interesting <laughs> all right okay so where i'm going with that was um for you personally when you when we played this uh, arcturian youtube there for the two and a half minutes there mm -hmm. you go into the light language and then you come through and you give an english um translation of it Mm -hmm. have, you, have you now come to the understanding even with you asking your higher self and you've gone from german into english you've been able to communicate with us by putting words together to create sentences to be able to have a conversation with us have you now with these individual light languages from different star systems have you now been able to basically write pages of light language but at the same time, you know, when you look at it, what that represents, you know, you've got a full understanding of that language now in, mm -hmm. your, Germ in your German mind and then your English mind. Is that where you're at now? Yeah. Can you stick with that at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, when I translate it in English, that's true. I have to think a little bit about because it's not my mother tongue, right? Yes. <laughs> a little bit. Then I have to tune into here yeah but i received the, the message intuitively on um, when i listen to that light language then sometimes i can translate the information or the, the basic information and it does exist people and they are creating light codes and they're writing them down do, 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 do. so that's also very cool it does exist very cool artists and they're creating these codes and even signs like A, B, C, but also in other forms. That is also very cool. Yeah, but I feel it more. I use that to transmute the frequency. And sometimes I receive the message and then I translate it as best I can in English. Yeah. Right. So, um, I, Karen. I was just going to share that. Um, I've had quite a few dreams and they were mainly in Australia about um, being on a ship and being with lots of people and, and the mountain just opened up and out come this massive craft and then I've had other ones where I've been sat in, in front of a great big screen with big squares and that had different symbols along and I was there doing, yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what, <laughs> doing yeah. a lot of string strings in my dreams. So, but I haven't had so much since I back in the UK, but obviously the energy is a lot um, more solid, more denser over here than it is in Australia. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's very fascinating. I did try to uh, create symbols, so maybe I can give them a trial as well. So <laughs> let's see what's popping up. <laughs> yeah, we never know, eh? <laughs> yeah. But right. I feel that the most of the beings, they have another language like us. I get the um, Pleiadian group, mm. they they have a language. That's what I feel in the Syrian people also. Yeah, yeah, that's what I get. They have a language, but Arcturians not really, because they are too, too multidimensional. These are nine-dimensional yeah. beings or higher, so they are non-physical. They have no body, so. Yeah, mm. yeah that makes sense. Okay, so there's a question from Francis there. Um, she's in Queensland here. What's your understanding of someone's purpose here? I suppose that comes back to asking for a reading in the sense of that's what they would be knocking on your door, wouldn't they? They'd be coming to you to say, you know, can you shed some enlightenment as to who I am and why I'm here? I, I mean, everybody would come through with that understanding somewhere in their life. I'm sure of it yeah it's um the heart center so you feel it when your heart is very wide open or the childhood can be a reminder as well because when we were a child so we felt what we want to do for example i wanted to sing all the time i felt it so much i want to create art work so and then i grew up in the opposite yeah that the dynamics yeah, it was almost impossible to sing or to express myself there. So, and your heart center is a very good sign to figure it out that we 
go deep within and that we stop with the monkey mind a little bit so that we uh, trust our hearts and not to think about it. Can I earn money with that? I can't do it. What will the neighbors say? What will my family say? This is all this so that we are too much focused on other people, other people. But when I'm honest with myself, what is my favorite free time activity? Or when I turn back into my childhood. So what was my biggest dream? So wh what do I feel for real? And actually we have the answer or the universe is supporting us as well that the universe is sending us signs all the time, right? For example, people came to me for so many times or they asked me for support, right? So all the time that they ask me, can you help me? Do you have a tip or a advice? And that happened to me that people came to me because the people feel intuitively your purpose and the frequency. Or you had a job offer, for example, um, and it, it comes to you. And then the mind is coming. No, I can't do it. No, then I have to change the situation. Or what will my family say? So, and then we don't do it. So it's actually very simple. And the purpose means that we manifest what our soul is telling us without any filter, without interruptions, that it becomes one. The mind and the heart, that it, it becomes one. Yeah, so that we use our mind also. How can I manifest it? How this should work out? I need money. I have to pay for my flat. So I think that's important to see. But how can I manifest these dreams? That it becomes one. That we create these dreams into the physical reality. And that we stay present in the moment and that we enjoy every moment. This is all that we have. And then you see that really everything makes sense. So when I look back, because through all this darkness and Marcel's darkness, so we were guided to each other. And I think because all this happened to us, even this, this darkness, we were guided to each other because through this experiences, we increased our frequency. So, and then we met each other or even this crazy experience for a couple of months ago. So, when I look back, I'm so grateful for this experience because now I can meet you. I can talk to you. I know so much more what my real purpose is and that I have only this precious moment and not more. So it, it helped me to shift my consciousness level again. So, but when we stayed in this process, when we were surrounded by these holograms a couple of months ago, it was very horrible there. Um, we didn't got why we are here. So why this is happening to us? So we, I cried all the time because it was almost impossible to escape this crazy holographic world. But um, we said there must be a reason. And afterwards, I'm so grateful for these experiences because they shared with us their crazy network of the dark ones, how they are working with which technology so we saw their entire plans for humanity and we figured so much more out what is our real purpose on earth so and for me it's like now i do it so much more with so much more passion because it can be over so fast so and now we see that everything made sense again even this crazy experience so, and this is my personal tip, but this is more the higher consciousness level, yeah, by the Octarian people, they see it more from this perspective that everything is a part of the process. Mm -hmm. So, and also the dark situations, all this what's happening now, at the end, we will get why this happened. So then we will understand it. Yeah, definitely. Um, right. I was going to say something then, but <laughs> um, it's popped out. So, Jeff, over to you. Well, okay. Um, I think we might just wind it up there. Um, but everybody now knows we've got your um, website up there. Hang on, what's this? I uh, would be interested in hearing what is happening with the Australian energy. Um, mm. That's a pretty profound statement. Um, there's certain 
pockets there that the political leaders seem to be um, carrying a little dark energy there, isn't it? Yeah, I feel that Australia is, is very complicated and dark. It's, um, it feels almost similar to Austria in the center of Europe a little bit, but I think Australia is a little bit darker to us at the moment. So it, it feels to me like they want to make this uh, test or this experiment in Australia first and even in the center of Europe. So the same, we have the mandatory peaks peaks in Austria and in Germany, they're talking about it too. They want to have it too here. So it's like they want to make this experiments mostly in these regions at one hand where the energy were very light. Yeah, that they boom, lower the frequency that the people are in fear because the dark ones can deal with fear and with shame so much better than when people are happy. For them, this is punishment when people are happy or when the energy were dark before. So then they think, ah, we can do it with them because they are not awakened yet. So, okay, so then we do it here. And in the center of Europe here, I feel, yes, it was dark before. So that's why they do it here so crazy. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the um, awakening of the mass is what's happening now. So. Well, Australia is definitely waking up. I mean, um, you know, 500, 600, 700,000 people turned up in Melbourne and, and, and walked down the streets there. I mean, Sydney had 300,000, Brisbane had, you know, 50 something thousand people. Um, Perth had similar. So um, there's a mobilization there that it's grassroots in it. So, and the fact is, everybody's coming together in love and holding that space, uh, which is most important. So, so um, yeah, I think. Definitely a big shift here, and it's, if Australia can continue with that push, uh, I notice if some of the political parties now they don't even bother turning up; they just feel they're above it all. But we've seen this before in Australia's polit political world. When 1974, we had Gough Whitlam, and um, a lot of people came out in the streets for Gough Whitlam. And then in 1985, 86, we had a similar. Uh, switch there where people the grassroots got behind a political party called one nation and in queensland here they just took 11 seats just like that so um it seems to me that we're going to see that again when um when you're not renting people to turn up to do a demonstration people are coming in their own yeah. free will and as i said to you before there was you know, grandparents there and and you've got the families turning up with their children and basically all ages and and because of australia's really people who've migrated to uh, to Australia, we're actually seeing those people who've come from repressed societies realizing that mm. escaped that type of lifestyle to come to Australia because they had the freedom. They're stepping up. And so we're mm. seeing all, all the different um, people from ethnic toxicity coming in and, and realizing, hey, we're here to, to defend um, the human life, the sentient life. You know, So uh, I've really got really positive outlook for Australia to rise above all this. And um, we'll see the draconian, interesting yeah. word, draconian um, aspects um, being removed from this planet. <laughs> yeah. But I personally feel that Australia vibrated very light before, isn't it? Is that true? Uh, so when I tuned into Australia, so I felt actually the energy of Australia is vibrating very light, actually, New Zealand as well. The energy there of, of nature and the landscape is that true i'm going to say yes and um i'd suggest to you that um, because of the vast emptiness of australia mm -hmm. and its previous custodians that have been on in this world we haven't really had major conflicts like you've got in the area of saxon um which has been a hive of um of wars and so forth. I mean, the Scandinavians with their thirty-year war, you, you don't see the Scandinavians, you know, mm. bickering and fighting. And England's always been notorious for <laughs> invading other countries. So there's a certain spirit within in England there that likes to dominate, and that seemed to have moved across to America. And America seems to have been a a community that, what, for two hundred and seventy-six years, of con continually going to war somewhere. Um, it's almost like the Roman Empire translated itself and moved across to America 
whereas Australia's been and New Zealand's been quite um, away from that whole scenario. And so then mm -hmm. to answer your question, it has been a an energy of of um, softness and freedom. And you can feel that when you come into mm -hmm. Australia, you feel the expansiveness of your auric field when you, you travel around and get mm -hmm. out and about through nature and the beach or even going into the outback. And, and in the outback, when you've got no city lights and you just see the stars coming all the way down to the to the horizon it's just a surreal um mm. understanding where your soul's really at home isn't it yeah and then i think they wanted to lower the frequency there very strong that's why i think australia is so dark right now because they wanted to woo, lower the frequency very massive in australia yeah you're yeah, well, exactly right but in so, the center of europe it was dark before so switzerland is very dark as well austria is dark germany so like i told you not many people they are not interested in spirituality and really they believe almost everything what the media is telling them but a few people are waking up right now they see something is off a little bit right so i think the uk is similar to us isn't it yeah yeah similar mm. Well, I think um, what's happening in Australia, it, we've seen uh, an interesting federal government that's um, not lifting a finger to protect its citizens under federal law, and we're allowing these little chieftains in the little states there to uh, repress people with, um, with something that's really of no interest. It really doesn't uh, impact on people's lives and the suppression mm. that's been and complicit with the mainstream media. It's, it's been... Um, that's been interesting. I mean, the, the media itself has been suffering financially, and you've seen that over the last you know, seven, eight years. Then, when Facebook came in, and and Twitter, and and uh, Spotify, where people have moved away from traditional forms of media to take those other platforms, and the income was drying up in those major media uh, players, where they're networking their shows and reducing their staff, and now we're seeing the money's come back into those media. Um, organizations and doing so they're only doing the one narrative so that's not journalism there's no there's no balance in the in the, in the journalism anywhere anywhere mm -hmm. um in the old days you would actually get um a balanced news service so you know you would you'd get both sides of the story but today when you see a publication out on the stand there it's it's actually directed to a dip, dip, different demographic audience and so they've really got it down to a very um fine edge a cutting edge of saying right i'm going for the 16 year olds here i'm going for the mm -hmm. 60 year old ears and we're going for this particular individual so we're seeing like in the major media you, you'll see right we're going to go for the conservatives we're going to go for those people who built a business and they're business people and they understand what it takes to run a business and then we got the others who are saying right we're going for the blue collar worker we're going for the the, the guy who's got his hands dirty so we're going to talk to him and so we're actually splitting up our society into these different polarities and yeah. they're, they're focusing on these different polarities to split us up. And so, yeah, there's a guy back in the 16th century, I think his name was Lord Machiavelli. He said, if you don't have an enemy, create one, divide and rule. Mm -hmm. um, so Machiavelli is a, a form of us and them. So I think that the movement that's taken around the world is, is we're, we're making people a, aware and awake but making people feel inclusive so mm. we're not actually saying because you believe that that's fine you, if you're more than welcome to come and join us if you can stay in your only little patch that's fine with us as well as long as you've got the freedom to be able to understand where you're at and maybe you know you might be able to open your eyes and see that this game has been played out uh to um, your soul's detriment and also your family's detriment and your offspring you know mm -hmm. it's coming later Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very important that uh, the Australian people unite and that they create new communities, I think, so that you are helping each other. Does exist communities in Australia, alternative communities, um, and they are supporting each other? Uh, there's always been um, people off the grid and there are communities uh, that have evolved and have come. I mean, uh, yeah, sure, we've seen uh, the import, import of... Um, say the Buddhist fraternity have come in here and um, 
mm. the Taos and all that stuff and they set up their um, places of the spiritual um, what would you call it contemplation mm. I mean uh, the, the English you know and the Catholicism was um, you mm. couldn't eat meat on a Friday so you, you'd see all the Catholics down in the fish and chip shop on a Friday night and there wasn't any diversity of food and then when our migration changed and, and came into Australia you know you, you see the likes of every kind of food connoisseur from all around the world is now in Australia and you see this blending of of, um, of traditions and culture Australia has really evolved in the last 40 years it's, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Good. very that much enriched good. yeah so it's, it's I would call it a Noah's Ark to be perfectly honest yeah 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 and then we'll see if the masses will wake up soon <laughs> but I think it's a universal law for me when it's getting very very dark the light has to come so and when it's getting very worse and very dark so then the light is waiting behind the darkness so then you can be sure that it's getting very light so and i believe that even in central of europe it will be very light because it's so dark and it was dark all the time here really very heavy so not on the material level right but more on the mm, soul level very pure so and I think that the light is returning and is waiting behind the darkness and behind the chaos. So and that the, what is happening global for me is the awakening of the masses. And yeah, it's a it's still a war. And I told the people that this galactic war is coming down into our reality. And in higher dimensions, it was very explosive, very boom, explosive, and then everything was clear. So I'm not sure if this will happen to us, but maybe it's the same here on Earth. So it's very boosh, explosive. And then after that explosion, everything is clear. Yeah, so and it was all the time the same in higher dimensions. Very close, but then after that, it was very clear. So we will see. Yep. Right there, Andrina. Yeah. Has she got a microphone on? Yeah, it's it's still hey. off. <laughs> I'll turn it on. <laughs> Talking to myself here. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've gone a little over time, but um, you know, just listening to you sharing and um, it's been really fascinating and gives a lot of people more of an insight of where they're at, what's going on, being in their heart center and yeah, yeah. And reaching out to community. Like you said, there's so many groups setting up now, meeting in the park on a Sunday and um, and all of these things. So, you know, it's like the light is, we're all coming together more and more and then it's just like, Yes, it's shifting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and everything is clear. Yeah, yeah, Archangel Michael. I mean, he's, he's working a lot at the moment as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think they must be on overtime, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming and sharing all thank of your... Thank you also very much. And it's lovely connecting with you. Yeah, I'm very, very grateful. And thank you so much for inviting me, really. You are also awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.